Live from the r r Center in Tokyo, this is the Best Care Anywhere podcast. I'm your host, Anthony, lounging poolside. Over on the golf course is the one, the only, the magnificent, the sexy, Ethan Wilson. I don't know how to play golf, but they gave me this little cart and like a 12 pack. So I'm just going to start hitting balls and see what happens. Fabulous. Fabulous. And sunning himself on a luxurious canvas Xanadu is Jasky. I really want to ask what a Xanadu is, but I'm just going to carry know. on. I don't Google you know, it now. You know what's hilarious? What, what, what's I a just, Xanadu? I, I just copied a line that a character says later in the series, and I just realized I don't know what a canvas Xanadu is. Uh, you know? Zabadu is a type of grape. No, no. Uh, you know, hmm. I said it, and then you asked me what it was, and I don't have an answer for you. Uh, uh, all right. <laughs> Xanadu was a film, according to Wikipedia. You know, none uh, of these, <laughs> none of these that you are naming is even close none to what these. the character was describing when he said it. So you know what? Nope. We're just gonna let it go, gentlemen. How are you? How are we doing? Well. Happy I'm a little confused, but I'm here. Don't worry about it. Ignore the confusion. Work through the pain. You're, it's you're, 2023, you're... baby. Best year ever. Nothing's going to go wrong. Yeah. I'm so scared of what's going to happen go between <laughs> us recording this and when we I release really... it now that I've said that. Yeah, World yeah. War III, baby. Let's go. <sighs> anyway. Yeah. What's what's new and exciting with you guys? Um, it's windy. It is it's pretty windy, dude. It is windy as shit. It has been. Today's been like the first calm day in a week. It is. Oh boy, yeah. Uh, it is. I it, have a new hole in my foot. You do have a new hole in your foot. You How, do. Did was this? Did you want a new hole in your foot? I'm confused. Is this a good thing? Are foot piercings a thing? Uh, sure. No, I, I I don't want them to be. If, no, no. What what happened? Uh, walk us through. Walk us well, through. There share, I was. Share your trauma for our uh, content and entertainment. There I was, minding my own business. Bullshit. Uh, yeah, you're right. So, uh, for um, money on the side, when I'm not doing school, I do demolition. Um, for uh, a little construction company that a uh, family friend runs. So uh, I was working in tandem with a new guy, you know, showing him the ropes, uh, all that good stuff. And we were tearing out the black mold from a basement. Um, so, you know, that, that it's already fun because I'm already getting hazard pay. And he leaves a board with a nail sticking up at the bottom of a dark staircase to go down. Uh, just for me to step on huh yeah is this person a former employee yet or uh he is about to promote himself to unemployed because uh mm. that that did not uh do him any favors does d is there kansas is there kenosha is this a thing is there uh, uh, kosher kosher is it kosher i don't know uh osha is a dirty word in any form to me Regardless of whether or not it helps me. Yes, but OSHA is good for when, for not getting moldy black spore footholes. Well, this is so why OSHA is... exists is because dumb people exist, Ethan. Yeah, yeah, but um, I don't actually have a good response to that. Let me let me let me be even more boomer esque about it. People like the guy that left the nail at the bottom of the stairs are the reason your own personal coffee cup has to say caution contents may be hot. Do not this make the me way check the my world. coffee cup. For this is the way of the thing. world. Oh yeah, like the portable thermoses, all the ones my dad have say caution contents may be hot like on the lid. Because companies don't want to get sued by stupid people that burn themselves on their own coffee in their own house. Oh yeah. Yeah. The universe, the the, the world, the world is full of stupid people and unfortunately we have to cater to them or their stupidity will grow. But anyway, enough about that. Let's talk about not MASH. Uh, for those of you wondering why we're not talking about MASH, we decided with the new year we would take a small 
a small R and R. We're leaving the four hundred seventh seventh for an episode, taking a break, stepping back, treating ourselves, looking out for us, mental welfare, all that good jazz. And we're gonna talk a little bit about some of the media other than Mash that we enjoyed in twenty twenty two and. A uh, uh, fun surprise that I'm just telling you right now. Uh, we're also going to mention any bits of media we are looking forward to in 2023. And when I say media, I do mean literally any media. Uh, books, TV, movies, video games, music, podcasts, uh, interstellar transmissions from another species. Whatever you're looking forward to that can go in your eye or ear holes. We we want to we wanna discuss. So, I want to hear about it. We want to hear about it. Um, with that, there is very much no format uh, to this lovely episode. Uh, who wants to name off a chunk of media that they've been enjoying and expound upon it for us? So, I I had a couple of things that I wanted to bring up throughout this episode, right? Yeah. But as as I was bringing up the tabs on my computer so I could reference the information, I discovered something interesting. <laughs> So, so let, let me just start this off by saying, do either of you remember the movie The Northman came out last year? Yes, I was. I Loki was kind of hoping you'd put this on your list of ones to bring up because mm. I have yet to be able to see it, but it looks like and sounds like it was really good. Okay, so w Wilson, did you ever see The Northman? I never saw it. No, I am very familiar with it. I, I know the pop culture references. I didn't realize there were any. Okay, okay. So, The Northman, it uh, released April 22nd, 2022. Uh, it was directed by Robert Eggers and was also produced by Alexander Skarsgård and Robert Eggers. Skarsgård also played, I believe, the main character in the film. Now, now I went and saw this in theaters. Is that Skarsgård yeah. the same Skarsgård, like, son of? Is he a relation? The same family of Skarsgårds, oh, yes. Oh, my God, They're yes. a family of Skarsgårds, yes. yes, yes, yes. The Skarsgårds are going to make appearances in this episode, I think. Yeah, he gained his... Alexander Skarsgård gained his first role in Zoolander, surprisingly. <laughs> oh. Okay. Yeah. And then he uh, really started getting traction in kind of the, the Hollywood uh, industry when he played uh, Brad Colbert in the miniseries Generation Kill, which I did watch a few episodes of that. Ooh, it's very, okay, very yeah, well done. I'm, I'm familiar with Generation yeah. Kill. Yeah, 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 yeah. But anyway, The Northman. I saw trailers for it. It looked amazing, um, just visually stunning. So I went and saw it in theaters, and I thought it was very well done. Now, cool. Robert Eggers. He, from what I know, has done a few very good movies. Um, I mean, the last one that I remember him doing is The Lighthouse with, um, um, mm. oh, what's his name? Um, um, he played Green Goblin. Willem Why Dafoe. can't I think of his name? Willem Dafoe. Willem Dafoe and Robert Pattinson. Uh, and that yeah. was heralded as like a really, really just like artistically beautiful piece of film. And I was kind of expecting the same thing. And it's a completely different film, but it's also still very artistic. The entire thing is just beautiful. All, all the scenes are just well shot. The lighting, it, it's, it's a beautiful film to watch. Now, uh -oh. when I looked this up on Google, it has a 2.6 out of 5 on Google. Really? <laughs> yeah. With, I don't know maybe 30% of people voting five stars and then less than 10 for everything else. And then like 60% of people rating it one star, which made me confused because I thought it was pretty good. And on Rotten Tomatoes and IMBD, it's rated well. So it, it looks like it just got review bombed on Google for some reason, but I can't figure out why. Uh, I can shed only... some light on that. Oh, please, please do. Does so, Kansas um... hate the Northmen? What no, happened? no, of course not. Uh, the reason I know as much as I do, uh, which isn't much admittedly about this movie, is because it became sort of the next in the line of the uh, incel uh, idols. And I'm talking, of course, you know, uh, 
drive the main character the the driver if you will or uh bateman in um american psychopath or is that what it is american is psycho or, american yeah. psycho yeah, yeah. you you, uh, you, so, you 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 gave it its proper name Amer- yeah. american thank psycho. you it's full name <laughs> Uh, so this was kind of, uh, Skarsgård was the next in line for it. Oh, and so huh. I like the new incel dude bro idol. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. So naturally when you have that group of people saying, oh my God, I have to base my entire life off of this character. You have the people that hate that group review bomb the movie. Hmm. Interesting. I was not expecting hmm. Wilson to be the uh, authority on incel dude bro culture for us. But That's but here weird. we are. Yeah. He huh. studied he yeah, I didn't, stuff I didn't like a botanist. Know about that at all. What can I yeah. say? Wow. Uh, huh. ignoring, well, well, there you go. Ignoring huh. the dude bros. Uh, he, so here's the thing. If Jasky says, hey, you should enjoy this piece of media or hey, this piece of media, not worth your time. I tend to put a lot of weight on your <laughs> recommendation it's, because you, you this is one very... of the few movies that I I gave it as much hard drive space as it required mm-hmm. for the mm-hmm. highest possible quality I could get. Now, it's it's one of those you, movies that deserves to be enjoyed on the big screen or as close as you can you go get. see it on the big screen or have you only I did. See, I that's did. how I know. That's if, where I saw it. If a movie piques Jared's interest enough that he's like, hmm, I will forego waiting for someone to uh, make it available uh, for freezies somewhere in high definition. On the high seas. I will, yes. I will go interact with the public, you, and go see it in a theater. It's like, oh, oh, this movie might be something, something. Jasky has cemented himself as the better looking Roger Ebert in my mind. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I don't know who that is, but thank you. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Hence, you know, I don't know if that makes your recommend. I, that actually might make your recommendations on media better. <laughs> I All right. Know, I don't know who big movie reviewer is, but I know this movie is spicy. Go see it. Why would I? Why would I listen to movie reviewers? Well, you, exactly. nobody's listening to him anymore. May he rest. Yeah. Oh. 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 Yeah. Oh. He died. Yeah. yeah he yeah. did pass away. Um, oh. Well then, that's unfortunate. He, he was no. one of the he's he he was one of the like main. I think Roger Ebert was actually a d- good movie reviewer. He did not hmm. a whole tangent on Rotten Tomatoes and other movie review sites where it's just like people sitting in an office just typing up or yeah. Roger Ebert was one of the last good like he he would he would tell it like it is like yeah filmmaking wise this movie is maybe not the best film. But it's a good like he would he would tell it to you straight like it may not be a critically acclaimed work of cinema, but it's a fun movie to go. He 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 tell he'd be honest he 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 wouldn't you know write a shitty review because it's what the populace wants to hear about big major franchise or he wouldn't fluff a movie up just to fluff it up because big studio you know he was he was yeah. pretty decent at you know just telling it like it was but. Anyway, so yeah, The Northman. Okay, that is definitely going on my list of shit I need to watch. Yeah, it, I, I, I scrolled through some of the one-star reviews on Google just to see what people were saying, and most of them are kind of hilarious because a lot of them are just saying the movie's bad because it has unnecessary amounts of gore, despite it being it's a okay. movie about Vikings. Um, <laughs> I, I, I'm really curious if all these people thought Vikings didn't, you know torture and raid and pillage like did they did they think that just didn't happen like like Vikings were a very violent group of people like yeah that's kind of their whole identity yeah uh one of these people just said that the movie was bloated at two hours and 17 minutes it was it was bloated i mean okay i see most that's 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 most movies in this day and age like most movies around this you know last 10 years or so are around two hours long so but here's my question though and this is gonna this is gonna mirror a piece of media that we have all uh i'd say uh two-thirds of us have enjoyed fully Mm. um this is gonna be a question that's gonna come up there too is the northman it's 
two, more than two hours long, but is it constantly bopping or are there slow parts to it? Oh, there's definitely slow parts to okay. it. Yeah. Okay. It's so very it's, much it's, a... It's not a Pixar or Marvel... Things are happening no. constantly to keep you engaged. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, it's it very much a movie that just follows one dude and tell it, it tells a story. That's it. Yeah. And not every part of the story is the climax. And I think people can't get over that. Yeah. Which is kind of sad, but yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, but Willem Dafoe was also in this movie just for about five minutes, but he, oh. he was also in the Northman. Man, Willem yeah. Dafoe's going to appear more than we think, too, because I'm che- oh. I'm going to cheat a little bit. Oh. Because I think this movie came out in 2021, but I think you and I went to see it in 2022. So that's how I'm sneaking it in here um, hmm. because I can't stop. I, I every at least once a week, I will think about this movie. And it's one of the it's one of the few things that is going to keep me interested in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. And I'm going to reach way back and I'm going to say Spider-Man No Way Home still mm. occupies a space in my brain for all the go- all the best reasons. Uh, Ethan, did you ever have the chance to see No Way Home? Oh, of course. Yeah, okay. absolutely. Um, we Actually, talk- I'm. I am 100% sure I saw it with you guys, so I'm were you a with, little hurt. Were, wait, were, did, was that before you went up to Kansas? You guys you guys saw it once, and then I couldn't make yeah, it. Yeah, then, so we, then we went and saw it with him. Yeah, yeah, yeah he was with so us. Just so you could see my reaction. That's right. Yeah. We did. I completely forgot I saw that movie twice. Yeah. Huh. It's Neat. fine. <laughs> I do. I forget the timeline of it, dude. Ever since like December, <laughs> I don't know what for sure has happened on what day since December of 2019. Uh, <laughs> so forgive me. Um, that could have been two days ago or eight years ago, for all I know. But yeah, that I know we talked about it for a little bit right after we saw Wakanda Forever. But mm-hmm. about like the Marvel burnout and, but. With the big franchises, because we're going to talk about some Star Wars here, too, at some point. Spoiler alert. With the big franchises, I'm not. Do I think maybe Disney is overmaking some stuff? Yeah, a little bit. Are are they just pulling at every thread to put a movie out for people to go see? Yeah, a little bit. But at the same time, I like the Marvel Universe. I like the Star Wars Universe. I want to see more stuff in that universe. Is everything that we're going to see in that universe going to be... 10 out of 10 great cinema or TV? No, but that's better than getting nothing. And I and when we do get something good, it's amazing. And No Way Home is one of those. I think I want to see more of Tom Holland's Spider-Man. Even though we've got mm. what that's his third solo movie. It was Homecoming, Far From Home, No Way Home, and then he was in Endgame and all and uh Infinity War and all that. Despite that, I still want to see more of Tom Holland's Spider-Man. I think he's excellent as Peter Parker. And the fucking... I know they telegraphed it super huge. And it was kind of obvious what they were going to do. Because they... In the trailers, they kind of snuck that, you know... Doc Ock was back and all that. But holy crap. I, I was still blown away by... They actually committed to the multiverse and brought... Uh, Tobey mm-hmm. Maguire and Andrew Garfield Spider-Man in. That's and awesome. They kept it more impressively. They kept their involvement incredibly under wraps up until the premiere, I believe. There was like there was nothing that was hard proven that the other Spider-Men were there until the movie released or like premiered, I believe. Yeah. I think the only thing that really happened was there was a there was a leaked photo from the set that showed there were different versions of the Spider-Man costume. But mm-hmm. that, I think that was the only thing that leaked out. It was pretty impressive for Marvel. Pretty, we'll be, pretty impressive. Well, be, and they even kept secret because like, yeah, you saw that. Um, oh, what's the act, actor's name? Who is Doc Ock? I'm going to need to pull it up. I'm going to feel bad. Oh, 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 gosh. Um, I can't remember his name. Um. Why is he not one of the like the first three people on the cast list? Hello, uh, Alfred Molina. Alfred Molina, Molina. Yeah, that's yeah. his name. I'm gonna start with an M. I know they had him in the trailer as Doc Ock, and I'm like, okay, he's there for like what? 
in a scene. Maybe they had brought him in for a day to do a scene. No, he was in the yeah. entire movie. And they didn't mm-hmm. show you, they didn't show you Jamie Foxx's character Electro. They didn't they were gonna the trailer that they were gonna have a trailer where you see Willem Dafoe as Green Goblin, but then they pulled back and just showed the pumpkin, the pumpkin bomb. Yeah. Dude. And if, if anyone's listening and is like over Marvel, I get it, but I would say there's still interesting stories to be told in that universe. Maybe not all maybe not all the movies we're going to be getting are going to be interesting, but I would say uh the spider any Spider-Man movie any movie that is following new characters like another one that's going to be on my list is Wakanda Forever. I think the Marvel Cinematic Universe still has some golden 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 eggs to deliver us but yeah yeah the into the spider verse that is a movie i can't stop thinking about because it is that good yeah um Uh, yeah (laughs) anthony i'd like to request your your help a little bit because i want to take a hard right turn off of the big screen onto the printed page Ooh, yes please um i need you to help me bully jasky into reading smoke gets in your eyes and other Mm. tales from the crematorium that is uh caitlin Doty is also on my list of people to talk about um jared well okay let's backtrack um i i read this year i'm a big devotee of having youtube videos going while i work i do graphic design for my dad so podcasts audiobooks youtube playlists big part of just having something in the background while i draw digital lines on a Mm -hmm. digital page one of the channels that the algorithm served up to me about a year and a half ago was Ask a Mortician. It's this lady on YouTube named Caitlin, Caitlin Doty, who basically is very open about talking about funeral planning, death planning, what experiencing death is like. And she's very she's very active in the the funeral system is very capitalistic and very, um, very not good for people mentally when it comes to planning their death or dealing with a loved one's death. So she is trying to create kind of a movement. She calls it the order of the good death. The, you know, death should not be something you're scared of. It should be something that you are prepared for and can handle. And that is not going to make you bankrupt or your family bankrupt. And she has a whole YouTube series. Highly go suggest you check her out. She has very interesting stuff, but she also wrote three books over the last several years. And they're all three Mm. fantastic. Uh, the first one is called Smoke Gets in Your Eyes, uh, Tales from the Crematorium. That is her entry into and discovery of the funeral industry working at a crematorium in San Francisco. And she is very open and honest about what that process looks like. Uh, not in a grotesque, she's not like viscerally describing, but she is very like in the first three pages, you're hearing her describe the first time she shaved the beard off of a deceased gentleman before he was viewed by his family the last time. And then the process of cremating him and what that was like cremating her first body. It's an amazing book. Um, The other two are, will my cat eat my eyeballs? Uh, Big questions from little mortals about death. It's all children's questions about death. And some of them are great. Like, will my cat eat my eyeballs? Can we give my grandma a Viking funeral? And she goes into death about, the answers to those questions. And then the last one is from here to eternity, um, which has a subline that I can't think of right now, uh, where she uh, travels- from here to eternity, traveling the world to find the good death. Yes. Mm. And she basically goes all around the world and shares death customs and rituals and cultures and practices from different, very specifically non-white, non-Western white cultures. Cause mm. Death be handled very differently in very different places. Oh, yes. So, yes, yes. But her her big thing is your death should be how you want it. Your family member's death should be how they want it. You should be allowed to do base. Her belief is basically anything you want with your remains or your loved one's remains. You should be allowed to do. She she's been to the only open air pyre in the United States out in Colorado uh, she's one of the big people you may have heard in the news that uh, Oregon, Washington and California have legalized uh, aquamation, water cremation. 
and compost uh, burial. That was her. That was her and a bunch of her other associates. So, hmm. but yeah, I uh, highly recommend reading at least smoke gets in your eyes and checking out her YouTube channel. Ethan, yeah, no, I'm looking at her YouTube yeah. channel right now. Yeah. And I will say this before I ask Ethan the question I was going to ask. She is also fucking hilarious. It, it, I, I look up some of her book tour stops. It she much like a stand-up comedy show, she hits the same points and jokes, but she is so good. She is not your stereotypical like 1900s funeral parlor. Mm, my my condolences to your loss. And yeah, she is fucking funny. She is watch some of her book tour where she's asking pulling audience questions. She is a riot. But hmm. Ethan, I'll ask you as someone who I introduced this book to. One, did you end up finishing it? And two, what did you think of reading that for the first time? Because it's it's interesting. It's an interesting read. Uh, so I'm on chapter nine right now. I only uh, just recently going back to work and found the time to really commit to a hard read. And, you know, I think the reason, uh, you know, it's a lot like you said, she's just very naturally funny, but she, her sense of humor comes from the natural detached state you kind of get from, you know, being around death that much, but also realizing just how surreal it is to be that detached from it. And it's that mm -hmm. kind of style of humor that makes me think, oh, Jared's got to read this. Yeah. There's a lot of things I think you could personally relate to with all of your time in the lab. Um, but yeah, it's... it's a fun fact of the three people in this call, only one of us regularly like was near a cadaver ish sort of. And it wasn't the <laughs> me or Ethan, so. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah. uh, yeah, highly recommend. And she's funny, but it's also, I, I had to have a very awkward conversation with my dad because not going to go into it. I had a very near death experience right out of high school that has weighed on my mind from time to time. And I scared my dad a little bit because... Of course, when I choose to do this is when he chooses to come into my office looking for paperwork. And I had left the first draft of my last will and testament sitting on my uh, desk. And that made him very uncomfortable, which is part of the reason I recommend to people check out Caitlin Doty, because her whole thing is to not make that process awkward, whether it's mm. for yourself or for family. Like my parent, my dad's going to be 55 this year. Like... And I and I've kind of started talking to my mom like, hey, um, what's the plan? Like I being the oldest of three brothers, I kind of I'm kind of starting to I don't want to, but it's inevitable to think, huh, in another 10 or 20 years, what? What's the what's what's the plan? What happens? Or God forbid, what's the plan if something were to happen to me? So she 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 causes you to inadvertently think about those things while you're laughing at the things she's the story she's telling you in the book she's very good at just accidentally kind of slipping those thoughts in and not in a creepy or sad way but in a hey this is part of being human and you should think about it not be scared of it but think about it and have a certain whatever your comfort level is with it reach that state of being okay with it so yeah highly recommend highly highly recommend so yeah i'm glad you brought that up Ethan, because mm. i was going to go on a caitlin Doty rant so you're welcome. So yeah, fun. Uh, so you know what? Since we've each given one, I will go pull one real quick from our audience. I'll pull one of the audience tweets. We'll just add them into the room. Yeah. Uh, let me scroll. Who is the first to comment? Of course, it's uh, Mick Jamison. Like this lightsaber kills fascists. Um, mm. I asked. I basically put out, "Hey, we're doing a different episode. What media did you like over the last year?" He responded with uh, The Sandman on Netflix. Ooh, yes. Yes, yes. I, I forgot about Sandman. that. Man, I have not watched The Sandman. Have, have, have you watched The Sandman, Jared? Or are you just familiar? I, I have at the recommendation of a, of a co-worker. I mm. watched it. Um, it's based off of... It's, it's, it's... The TV show is based off a series of comics by Dark Horse. Like D DC Comics. So okay. it's in the DC universe. This is this is oh, technically okay. part of the DC universe. Thankfully, 
It has nothing to do with the existing DC <laughs> media. It's completely separate, so it's actually, you know, it's not tainted yet. Um, it was very different. It was a very different kind of of supernatural setting and main character isn't human and goes around trying to reclaim all his lost artifacts and figure out what's going on. And it, it's very interesting. Yeah, it was. It, it, it kind of reminded me, at least in the beginning of. Um, oh, the the, the, the mid 2000s, all those mid 2000s TV shows, you know, Supernatural, Buffy, the Vampire mm-hmm. Slayer, all, all those like yeah. like the, those shows that would um, take supernatural elements and turn it into like a scheme a week type show with some overarching, you know, major villains for each season and whatnot. It, okay. it had some of that flavor, but it was okay. fresh new style. Um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's also based off of, uh, I want to say Neil Gaiman. Is it, is it based off of his work? Um, no, yeah, man. No. Zed asking Gaiman. the two people who would have no idea. <laughs> Sandman. It's, it's, yeah, the comic books were written by Neil Gaiman. Okay. That's right. Okay. So yeah, it, and he's I'm I'm very biased because he's one of my favorite authors. Um, but yes, just the the way it was portrayed, the 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 direction the director took in portraying some very specific things. For example, like it, if I if I asked you right now, hey, we need you to film a scene where the literal god of dreams has a showdown, a fight with Lucifer. How would you, how would you portray that? Hmm. Cause like, you know, we, we, we have big punching matches between two super powered individuals in like every other piece of media. Now it's very boring. Wait a minute. I think I've seen this clip getting shared around. Where they're they're going, you is know, they're like they're an older, naming like a things. Middle, yes. Oh my yes. I, that's the yes. Sandman. Where it's uh-huh. like I am I am a wolf. I am a hunter. I am a snake. I need that's to watch from Sandman. Because yeah. I, I watched that scene. I think I watched that scene like three times on loop because it came across my like Twitter feed and I'm like, what show is this? This is and he's like, I am a world. I'm like, what the fuck is happening? This woman and this dude exactly. are just like yes. mental it's, battling. The, each episode is incredibly different and Ooh, deals with. Okay. Yeah, it's it's. And then they released like an extra episode at the end. But yeah, it, it's it's a very unique show. Very See, I'm unique. Very, I'm very I'm always very wary when things are tagged DC Universe because it's like, man, that is a. Very, very, very different hits on the roulette wheel with uh with the dc universe stuff so so think of it like this it's not part of the superhero superman batman d yeah. like dc extended c- yeah. cinematic universe or whatever yeah. they're trying to call it it's not part of that it's part of the john constantine like the, those kinds of that that kind of world with Ghosts and demons and angels and Ooh, mythology okay. and you know right. magicians. It, it's part of that world. Like technically, yes, it is part of the same DC universe, whatever. But man, the DC. How many? That's a whole nother thing. How many different Batman's have we had in the last ten years? I don't that's another thing I want to talk about. That is oh, the, the, the new God. Batman film. Yeah, it yeah. hurts my brain. Yeah. But later, anyway. later, later. Um, um, but yes, yeah, Sandman. Highly recommend. Um, I believe it, it was eventually confirmed to have a season two in the works. Netflix was reluctant. Um, no idea why it, it was doing really well. It was I think it had one of the biggest openings on Netflix outside of Stranger Things. Um, mm, okay. Wow. But don't quote me on that. All right. Because it's Netflix and you can't really kind of have to trust whatever they say. So uh, I'll, I'll finish reading. uh uh, lightsabers uh, comment because he he worded it he ordered his things very strategically. Sandman on Netflix, Andor, Confess, Fletch, Author Scott Rab, our podcast, the Aww. five 
the Fire and Water Podcast Network, which is um uh the network that hosts um not Mash Matters, Mashcast, one of the other mm. uh Mash podcasts, and a bunch of other uh pop culture uh you know superhero comics uh podcasts. And then he says the nice the Noise Guys podcast spelled N O I C E, which good on you lightsaber for putting our podcast another network that has a mash podcast and then sliding your podcast in there at the end i don't think (laughs) very nice (laughs) yeah uh basically the nice guys podcast is they mick and his um co-host whose name is escaping me i i think they're up to three or four episodes now and they they watch and review and talk about the most i don't want to say obscure because they're not obscure movies they're obscure to me because i'm a millennial but I think their first episode to give you kind of the taste was a uh, Jesus Christ superstar, uh, and okay. I think their their okay. upcoming their either it just released or the upcoming episode is the like OG eighties um, Transformers movie. <clears throat> so not not obscure movies, but movies that are kind of cult hit in the zeitgeist, kind of little just nuggets of r- nuggets of Hollywood that time not i I don't even want to say that time is forgot but that are you know everyone talks about star wars everyone talks about marvel but no one's talking about jesus christ superstar and they're they're filling that niche and it's it's a good time go check out the nice guys podcast i will be using my next turn on the round robin to fulfill a niche uh if if we can go that direction then sure what what niche are you filling well no it's not my turn i'll uh i'll i'll continue the order Oh As yes, I mean, Jared, you expounded upon Sandman, but it's technically your turn in the barrel after uh, the audience. What what was oh. one of your other pieces immediate? You you expounded um, upon Sandman, so but but that wasn't your your pick per se. So what? Uh, what I, I, I guess not. So yeah, we'll we'll keep this short. That's just a. Uh... Uh, poster of Sandman, just so you have a general I, idea. I did Google it to kind of get a feel yeah. for the art style of it, and it's it, very gothic. Yeah, it's cool. I'm gonna mm-hmm. have to check that out. Mm-hmm. I'm very I'm also very Lucifer is played by Gwendolyn Christie, um, Captain Bad. Good choice. Good choice. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yeah, and she's excellent. She's excellent. Um, I mean, all all the actors in this are just excellent. Remus Lupin's in there. Can't remember his act, the actor's name, but he's in there and he's amazing. Um, yeah, yeah. No, it's just a, it's it's a good little. It's short too. Um, not a lot of episodes in the first season. Yeah. But anyway, the same. Uh, Got it. A movie that I saw that was similar to The Northman um, was The Green Knight, which I believe came out in 2021, not 2022. But yeah, it's it's close enough. Close enough. July 30th, I, 2021. OK, why do I remember this movie? I remember hearing about this movie, The Green Knight. What? Probably because I was talking about it. No, I heard it in other. There was something. What? What? What about the Green Knight was weird? There was something different about it. I can't remember what it is. Um, it's a weird movie. Okay. Explain. In, in, Explain. It's 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 similar to the Northman in that it's a very much a not a a sit down and have every moment be action packed and it, it it does not mesh with the current trend of movies that are very popular if that makes sense it's not a constant stimuli movie it's very much a sit back and kind of enjoy for the next two and a half hours it's it's actually how long is it it's um directed by david lowry and he also directed not uh, maybe you guys will recognize some of these uh, a ghost story uh, he did Pete's Dragon. Oh, okay. I'm familiar. Uh, apparently, he's going to be directing Peter Pan and Wendy, an upcoming movie. I haven't heard anything about that. Um, oh, he's started directing a lot of stuff. The Old Man and the Gun, uh, St. Nick, Pioneer, Pit Stomp. A-, a lot of movies, but none that I really recognize, more, more, unfortunately. More, the, more small films not big blockbuster movies yeah when i yeah think of, when i think of someone say a film i'm thinking northman lighthouse like this isn't necessarily putting butts in seats but it is a wonderful piece of 
cinema. Yeah. Whereas and it looks like Marvel, he has a lot to his name. Yeah. It's just Marvel not a lot of big is, blockbusters. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um. It's a very artistic movie. It's 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 beautiful. Kind of ethereal in a sense. It deals with like old English fairy tales and has a lot of those aspects in it. Um, you don't need to know anything about it. It's, it's based on one of the oldest poems ever, the poem of the Green Knight and appearing at Camelot and challenging King Arthur's knights to a, a contest and so on. Um, it's a very odd movie. I think that's why it stuck out to me so much, because it, it took a different direction than anything else at the time, which is a positive in my mind, just because someone willing to do something different, you know, that's always nice. Uh, same thing as um, The Northman. Decent reviews on most sites, 89% Rotten Tomatoes, only 6.6 .6 on IMBD, though. Uh, two and a half on Google for reviews. It got, it got review bombed again. Uh, Wilson, do you know anything about this one? Uh... No, not not much. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna let you uh, read the reviews and then you tell us because uh, um, most of them were just saying poorly acted, poorly acted. One person was mad because they couldn't hear the dialogue because they're hard of hearing and they saw it in the theater. <laughs> which oh, I feel like now I don't I don't want to speak for all people who have hearing problems. I mean I have tinnitus, but that's not really a big Im impact when. I'm trying to watch movies. Um, uh, I knew you were going to do some bullshit like that. <laughs> um, I don't recall the dialogue being particularly low or quiet. Maybe that was just the theater they went to. Most people are just saying they just didn't like it. Um, some people are mad that they, they butchered the myth it's about. And I'm very confused about that because the original myth is like a page, maybe. It's not very long. <laughs> yeah, I don't understand why people got so upset at this movie. It didn't. It didn't do nothing. From what I remember, was too uh, controversial. Their smarter friends said that they screwed up the myth, so now they had to say they screwed up to myth, so they could all uh, be smart. Uh, mm. Yes, what? It's an excellent fantasy film. There you go. It's an excellent, excellent fantasy film. Um, I think it was the uh, the uh, the movie poster that stuck out to me because it, it just didn't look like any other movie posters at the time. It was like, oh, it's not just a collection of floating heads. I am interested. Hmm. Good. Yeah. Nice. But yeah, that that one was quite good. Um. Kind of in the same vein as the Northman. It's very much not a uh, constant stimuli one. Um, nice. Definitely one I would sit back and enjoy on the big screen, though. It was it was designed to be big. It, it uh, w there's there's a word to describe what I'm trying to convey, like big behemoths. Um, I can't think of it. I'll probably think of it after the podcast is over. But it, it's, it's, it's. I mean, that's a big shark, but it, kind of the same thing. A movie you that know? is meant to be seen, it, meant to be seen on the big screen. It's just got a lot of elements of just the sizing, the sizing, the scale. It is. It's got amazing scale okay. there. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Ex excellent scale. Yeah. Well, yeah, would recommend. I'll take us back to the physical written media. Mm. Uh, mm. I made Jared very happy this year. Oh, yeah. I can yes. no longer be made fun of. No, no, he cannot. Well, only a little bit. I have, Just a little bit. I have fi I finally used my Audible credits and listened to, but did not read physically, The Hobbit and the Lord of the Rings trilogy, finally, for the first time ever. And, you know, not a fan. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Jared, Jared's oh, crawl my heart. Me. I have heart palpitations. Ugh. No, um, 
I I appreciate I I understand the hype now. Uh, fabulous. No, I I started with the Hobbit, which is I know is a question I asked you like three times before I actually committed to reading it. It's like. I know the Lord of the Rings is like the big one, but like, should I read the Hobbit first? Should I not read the Hobbit first? I'm glad I did read the Hobbit first because it would have been weird trying to be like, hey, Bilbo went and did some stuff. Anyway, here's Frodo. <laughs> so, yeah, I read the Hobbit and then read uh, the main trilogy. I this is one I'm going to have to re-listen to slash reread a couple times before I'm really solidly can talk about it in great detail because Tolkien is a lot. There's a lot of a lot of words. A lot of <laughs> describing of very simple things with big words. Uh and I would like to listen to the story a couple times because I know the big overarching plot now, so now I can go back through and kind of fine tooth comb listen to the more you know more in more detail, but yeah. The thing I keep coming back to whenever I tell people I read Lord of the Rings for for the first time and they ask me what I liked about it, it's very clear Tolkien, and I forget the word for it, but he was not a linguist, but he was something like that. And I can't remember the like actual term for it, but I I, um, knew, I knew going in that he like he wrote Elvish, like he created Elvish. He created some of the language in the book, and it is... A wordsmith? No, like it's what is the someone who st the study study of language? He's, he's um, like a big language. Yeah, I can't think of it. Linguistics is what uh, Google gives me. Polyglot? Uh, I think no, is that just someone that like, speaks many languages? Uh -huh. There's a word for it. And I'm I hate that I can't think of it because I heard someone. Yeah say it when they were talking to me about the books and I can't remember it. Mm. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I keep just getting linguistics, but there was a word they used that I'm like, yes, that's the word, but he philologist. Yeah, philology. Uh, mm. It's an older uses, usage, especially in uh, England. Yeah, that would make sense. But yeah, uh, the thing I enjoyed the most is you guys have even heard me do it on Discord calls when I was reading the books or uh, listening to the books. You just hear me randomly say, like, Rohan, Minis Morgul. Like, because he he created the languages and was mm -hmm. so interested in languages, the books are just so pleasant to listen to. That they are. Like, they're... I can't even really compare them to anything... It's just the way he uses the words he created and the English language too, not just, you know, but, but it, it just, it's pleasant. Even the terror, like Mordor, you know, like it's just, they just flow so well and it nicely works. together. And the story is complex, but also incredibly simple at the same time. It's so weird. Like, I know there's so much like, like, he had a universe deeper than any other anthology in his notes and in his head, but the story he told was so basic. And I don't mean that in a bad way. Like, there... It was a very simple base story. Evil thing needs to go to Volcano. Heroes have to get it there. Mm -hmm. It's about as simple as it gets. Now, I will say, and this is something I am keen to mention when I also tell people that I read Lord of the Rings for the first time. I did not go in completely blind to the story, and I am glad that I didn't because it made me enjoy it more. What I mean by that is I did pull up one one or two videos by I th a gentleman called CGB Gray. He did two videos. What is the One Ring? No spoilers, but he did a video on what is the One Ring, and kind of a very simple no spoiler explanation of elves men dwarves and the other minor races just so someone going into uh, lord of the rings can kind of understand here's like here's what the chessboard looks like when you jump into this book and it was so helpful 
Because simply understanding what the One Ring is, what its powers are, and why it does what it does helped me enjoy the book so much more. And the other thing he mentioned in that in that breakdown that made me appreciate the world more was he mentioned, and it's not something I necessarily would have picked up on the first read through, I don't think, is that it is the end of the age of magic and the beginning of the age of men. I am glad I had that understanding in my head going in because I don't know that it's something I would have picked up on immediately. But it put it helped put some of the things like uh, in context for why why the elves are forlorn that the ring is going to get destroyed, even though it's the right thing to do. Why why the dwarves are not creating as much intricate, beautiful, magical, you know, weapons and armor and stuff that they used to. It's slowly becoming the human world, not the magic world, which is sad, but also. And, you know, the whole basis of the story. So, yeah, really mm-hmm. enjoyed The Hobbit and The Lord of the Rings. I really want to watch the goddamn movies like I really do. But mm-hmm. we have we have soft promised that that will be the celebratory thing that we do when, if ever, uh, one or the both of us is able to move out of our parents home. That'll be the celebratory. We move out uh, either together or separately. And then we uh imbibe on libations and watch the lord of the rings uh full whoop, whoop. crazy extended 13 plus hours yeah. however long it is yeah mm-hmm. yeah the whole shebang the whole shebang but yeah um i i know my review of the lord of the rings is very vague and mysterious but it is it is a book that i'm going to have to l- read and listen through a couple of times before i have a really solid like here is what i love about them here is what i like about them here's the things i don't like about them but just overall yeah. fabulous i really enjoy mm. S- side note um andy circus voiced the um yeah. oh, I completely the um, audiobooks that. yeah i which I, I figured, are just amazing i figured if christopher I'm... lee voiced the children of huron i believe <sighs> and i don't know if he voiced any more of the silver Lane or not but that that is one of the few things that Christopher Lee voiced that's in that same uh, the, the, the Tolkien verse, if you will. I forgot, so, high, I forgot highly to mention if if you have not read Lord of the Rings or I think or or do have read Lord of the Rings and want to enjoy them again, highly recommend, especially if you have an Audible account and get that free credit every month. Not a sponsor, mm-hmm. Audible. We'd love to be a sponsor. Um, Find the versions. Andy Serkis did a, I can't remember, I think it was The Hobbit he read as like a charity thing or a promotional thing when they were started doing The Hobbit movies. And I think then, so. And then the, the Tolkien's estate, I don't know if it was Tolkien's estate or the audiobook publisher was like, um, you need to read the other three books because that was fucking awesome. And yeah, uh, Andy Serkis... I would say 90% of the voices are like, yeah, that voice is good. The singing is not great. That's the common uh, detractor I think most people had when I looked at the reviews for his audiobooks is Tolkien writes a lot of like sing-songy elf stuff, which mm-hmm. Andy, it's not that Andy Circus can't sing. It's this, these little sing-song melodies didn't come with sheet music. So he's having to like make up the melody. And Andy Serkis also has a very deep, gravelly voice, so it's hard for him to be like, oh, hi, Elvish. So, yeah. Yeah. The singing is a little rough, but I think I re-listened to, um, oh, God, people are going to hate me because I don't remember the chapter name. The Hobbit when uh, uh, Bilbo finds the ring in Gollum. Riddles in the Dark. I think I re-listened to Riddles in the Dark five times because... I know enough about Lord of the Rings from pop culture to know, you know, Gollum voice, right? But holy crap, reading, listening to the original story with the Gollum voice I know in my head being Gollum was fucking, it was a little scary. I'm not going to lie, between Riddles in the Dark and I think I told you guys when I, uh, the chapter where Mary Pippin, Frodo, and Sam are going from the Shire to Bree, and just the description of the Black Rider following them, 
I was listening to that chapter at like 1 32 o'clock in the morning when I was locking up the shop building and it's pitch black outside, no moon. And I'm like, it's right as Frodo is hiding under the like tree root from the black rider on the road. And I'm like, I genuinely, my hair was standing up on the back of my neck and I was not scared, but like, I, I want to go home. I want to be home with lights on in my bed. I don't like it was genuinely the first time in a long time that a book had like scared me a little bit. And it was it was a very nice experience. I liked it. <laughs> so, yeah. Lord of the Rings. Uh, You know, kind of a niche, not really known about title. Highly recommend. Yeah. Oh. I really like that we're willing to shine these lights on obscure authors. Uh, yeah, very obscure author. <laughs> yeah, I think he's more of an indie author. Um, <laughs> I for, you know what the other thing is? Because I grew up, obviously, in the time when the movies were big and being promoted and all that. I forget how old that story, that those books are. They were written mm -hmm. in, like, the 20s and 30s. He, yeah. Tolkien was a World War I vet. Like, I forget how old those stories are. I always call back to that throwaway line that uh, Bucky has where he's like, yeah, I, I read it when it came out in 1930. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. I, yeah. Yeah, that just uh, goes completely over my head sometimes. Like, oh, yeah, those were written in the 30s. But all right. So, yeah. Ethan, what's your do you have any do you have another thing that you enjoyed? Yeah. Yeah. I, I've got a couple. Uh, I, I've got share. I, and I got to tell you, I, I feel bad because you two know that, uh, unfortunately, most of the media that I consume uh, without you guys being there to uh, talk me into it is very old. Well, old, old for us. Um, so I have two pieces. One I want to talk about because I think you guys would enjoy it so much. And one I want to talk about because it meant so much to me. The first, <laughs> of course, being... Uh, the 1969 American Western, Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid. Mm. Uh, uh, obligatory, also filmed at the Malibu Creek Ranch, um, or at least certain parts of it were. Um, but for you two, all you need to know is that it's Paul Newman and Robert Redford giving birth to the American buddy comedy as we know it. Because it's not a you know, shoot it up John Wayne Western. It's it's a very comical movie with some good points with one of the most, probably the most famous ending of any Western movie of all time. Um, I bring it up uh, specifically because Anthony, you and I have talked about, uh, um, oh gosh, what is it? Uh, the Outlaw Josie Wales on occasion. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I am in no way, shape, or form trying to uh, equate those movies to each other because they're vastly different. But, you know, mm -hmm. uh, different side of the same coin, if you will. Hmm. So the, the Outlaw Josie Wales is one that if my dad sees it, it's on like AMC or Turner Classic Movies, he'll watch it. But that's why I'm so familiar with that. And what one did my... The Billy the Kid movie from like the late nineties. That was another one that he'd always watch. Oh yeah. And yeah, that um uh... there's another one and I can't think of it. Not newer Western, but not new new. I can't think of it. They they that's the thing with Westerns. I don't watch a lot of them because it's hard to remember which like there were so many made that it's like, which ones are the actual good ones? Yeah. So uh this one is, you know, it's not just a good Western. It's constantly ranked among the best movies of all time. Mm -hmm. I do know um, that. It's it's just a good film. I mean, when you've got Paul Newman and Robert Redford just being themselves, it, it it's beautiful. Uh, Robert Redford is already one of my favorite actors anyway, but. Paul Newman does more than make cameos on ranch dressing. And that took me a minute. That, that took me a second to understand there what you go. happened there. <laughs> there you go. Um, and the other one that I've uh, really come around watching lately is uh, oh. the movie Easy Rider. You've heard me reference it several oh, yeah. times. Uh, have either of you watched it? I pr Again, Probably. I I, I I don't could, think so. I couldn't yeah. I couldn't distinguish it from the other westerns my dad watched. But yeah. I I probably have, but I wouldn't be able to tell you for sure. 
well, I'll, I'll just give you the, the broad stroke synopsis just so you can kind of get where I'm coming from. But Easy Rider is uh, also came out in 1969. It's characterized on Wikipedia as an independent drug culture road film. Uh, Peter Fonda and Dennis Hopper play the main characters, and this was the movie that really started Jack Nicholson's career, even though he's only in it for about 20 minutes. Uh, he he did make the film, though. So, uh, Peter Fonda plays this guy named Wyatt, Dennis Hopper plays this guy named Billy, and these two are on Harley-Davidson motorcycles. They oh. just uh, sold a batch of cocaine, and they're taking all of that money uh, to... Louisiana for Mardi Gras, and it's oh yeah. So it just I can now definitively tell you I have not seen this movie because I thought we were still talking about westerns and horses. Uh, no, <laughs> you uh, you have absolutely uh, seen the artwork for this movie. Uh, it's uh, I mean it's permanently ingrained it, the the American flag motorcycle, uh, whatever you want to call it. There's a gif of it in our Discord call. Mm. Uh, it's yes, also okay. one of the first movies to use a score that is uh, completely uh, made up of just regular songs, not uh, orchestral pieces, but uh, mm. the birds, Jimi Hendrix, uh, Steppenwolf, mm, especially. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, along the way, these two meet a uh, uh, hippie leader and go to their commune and they meet uh, Jack Nicholson, who's a broke down lawyer and a jail in a small town that they get thrown in for parading without a permit. And the entire movie is just kind of exploring, uh, the, the counterculture mm -hmm. as it existed in 1969. And the reason it has meant so much to me lately is because as you two know, I've been doing a lot of motorcycle and boy stuff out here. You know, I've been riding mm -hmm. a lot and, uh, I, I made my way up to Sturgis this year and that was, you know, fun. But I, I got to tell you, I, if, if I see one more 50-year-old dentist going through a midlife crisis on a motorcycle that he has 18 more payments on, you know, with some skulls on a black vest, I'm, I'm going to cry. It just... Don't cry. Please don't it's, cry. There used to be a reason for the counterculture... And what it has turned into today is just absolutely disgusting, and I want to be no part of it. But also, I like motorcycles, so I'm going to be a part of it. Just you got to find that, that niche part of the motorcycle kind of culture that's not the, the main motorcycle yeah. culture. Yeah, because it, it definitely exists, but it's just it's very specific. Yeah. So so this this movie embodies the counterculture as it started and you know why it was formed you know the uh nice. the establishment if you will and hmm. not the bastardization that is today anyway the establishment uh, of the anti-establishment also uh dennis hopper is absolute was uh absolutely batshit insane okay. um in his life and if you read about any of his antics, you'll just burst out laughing. He also appeared in the Super Mario Bros. movie in 1993. So, Oh, my. Dang. All right. Anyway, that's a movie I that's would love to forget. Mm -hmm. Don't worry. We're getting a new one. Uh, mm -hmm. It's a me. Crispy Rat. Uh, I can't okay. wait. <laughs> we, should, we should review that movie we, <laughs> on this podcast. D depending on how how that movie is so so spoiler alert there is something i would like to do season to season where there are a couple of pieces of related media that i would like to watch with you guys that are tangentially related to mash and one of them is a western mm -hmm. uh my darling clementine i would like to watch with y'all but that's Ooh. many years from now uh we may also have to look up uh some some henry morgan westerns uh, cause he is an actor. I'm Ethan with as much as you love Westerns, I guarantee you have seen ha ha Harry Morgan, a slash Henry Morgan. He went by both names, but we might have to pull up some of his films too, but we're not talking about mash. This is not mash episode, but the NT mash. But I want to watch NG. support your local gunfighter with you. Okay. Um, let's pull another audience one. 
since with the word back to the audience side of the table, Chief Smash Forever uh, says he's a little behind on the show, but he started Succession, which is a great show that he's trying to catch up on. House of the Dragon or House of Dragon. Is it House of Dragons or House of the Dragon? House of the Dragon. OK, uh, he said it was also very good and he thinks it has a lot of potential moving forward. His best movie was definitely Top Gun Maverick, but Way of the Water was visually incredible and still very good. Um, hmm. So real quick on Top Gun Maverick, I haven't watched it, but from what I have seen and what I have heard, it was not the 80s nostalgia trip, make a sequel just to make a sequel movie that I thought it was going to be, it seems. That is, again, with a grain of salt because I haven't seen it yet all the way through, but it actually seems to have done the previous movie justice and actually tell a compelling story uh, as opposed to just be, hey, look, it's Top Gun, but again. So, yeah. Oh, the, yeah, the story didn't really matter that much. Yeah, the story um, didn't really matter. It was, mo- it was, it was mostly just, fa- haha, jet go fast, woohoo, look. And to be fair, it was beautiful watching oh, those jets amazing. go fast. It was beautiful. And yeah. it's amazing how they come up with how to film not just the jets, but the interior in the cockpit. Uh, mm-hmm. it, it genuinely is... Again, it may just be a, you know, big screen popcorn movie, but that doesn't mean there's not incredible cinematography going on. And similar to, and I know we've talked shit about it in our private calls, uh, the Avatar movies, Jesus God, I Mm -hmm. appreciate that they are stunning and they are pushing the boundaries of cinema. Are we really getting three more of these movies? (laughs) Well, I say we will as long as James Cameron is still alive. I that man find it has hard. complete control over the finances of whatever studio he's working with, Warner yeah. Bros. or what have you. I, you know? I find it so hard to believe that if James Cameron were to pass before all five of those movies are made, that they actually get finished. Yeah, they, they won't. They will But not. at the same time, I, apparently I'm wrong about it in some way because it is – didn't it become the highest grossing movie? Like it beat out everything else? Uh, uh, I don't know if it's beating out everything else, but maybe I this year, yeah. yeah. I know it's – perfectly on par with the original movie Mm -hmm. i know that it saw a zero percent drop in sales from first to second week yeah people are going to see it i personally was not among them but you know i didn't i'll I'll probably go and see it it just i don't i'll I'll go and see it in theaters because it's one of those movies to experience correctly you kind of gotta go see it in theaters yeah 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 yeah. All right, Jared, back around to you. Do you have any other media you enjoy? Uh, a couple, but I'll, I'll keep them brief since we're about to wrap up here. Hi. Um just a just a couple just just some quick shout outs, I think. I have a I have like four or five. Um The Batman. Mm-hmm. Most recent okay. film. Okay. Um so Matt Reeves thing. directed. Uh I thought it was very good, very long, very gothic. Very well done though. Just the set design, the the architecture, just wow. Also, it has Andy Serkis, so can't complain. Oh, there you go. Uh, it's directed by Matt Reeves. He did uh, the Planet of the Apes movies. Mm-hmm. Um, he did the Cloverfield movies, which I yes. had completely forgotten about. Um, yeah, so that very different style movie for him to do, but I think he pulled it off wonderfully. Um TV shows, TV shows. Um, I don't know if anyone is uh, a fan of the the punk genres, cyberpunk, steampunk, but the show Edge Runners was an excellent, mm. excellent animated show based in the uh, the cyberpunk twenty seventy seven uh, universe. Um, that that game is also set in the universe created by I believe Mike Pondsmith, I think. Okay. Um, and it was just wonderful. Um, it is, I believe, a 10 episode series start to finish. There's no sequels. It's tells a story and tells it very well. Um, the animation is reminiscent of, you know, anime from the 90s. It's it. It feels nostalgic because of the way it was animated, just hand drawn. It, oh, it's gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. It also has Giancarlo Esposito in it. so. Like, mm-hmm. how how can you not love it, right? Um, Arcane TV show 
animated series that I did not think I would like, uh, based in the League of Legends universe, which I know nothing about. Um, I watched it at the recommendation of a friend. It's uh, very steampunky because, you know, League of Legends. Um, I, I watched it without knowing anything about the, the characters or the video game or anything, and it was very, very well done. Um, the animation was well done. Very different, very different animation compared to uh, Cyberpunk. Um, but again, kind of a short series, only nine episodes, I think. Um, but they are planning a season two. Uh, just a very tight knit. You, you can tell they put a lot of quality into it, a lot of effort into it. Just yeah, if you haven't watched it, go watch it. It's excellent. And finally, the last TV show I think that I saw that was quite good, aside from Sandman, um, Castlevania. Mm. One I've been following since 2017 when it came out with like, I want to say three episodes. Was it three or four? It was four. It, it originally was a small animated short. Four episodes long. Each of them 15 maybe 20 minutes long each tiny little project came out in 2017 uh, based on the uh, Castlevania video game series. Um, it's been out for decades at this point. Um, dark evil fantasy animated show, American animation style. Um, and it wrapped up uh, in mid 2021, I believe. And I actually finished watching the whole thing through in early 2022. Um, it's got vampires. It's got, humor it's got good laughs it's beautiful beautifully done show um yeah 10 out of 10 would recommend all of these nice um i would love to say that this next thing i'm gonna say is gonna be a quick mention but uh i think i have a lot to say about it and i know jared you probably have a lot to say about it. ethan i know you'll have some things to say about it but uh i alluded to it earlier and there's complaints i want to make about this tv show but not about the show itself, about the people who don't like it. Andor. Andor, I have seen all the way through. Jared, you have seen Andor all the way through, yes? Yes, mm -hmm. obviously. Ethan, you've seen the first three episodes, and then we kind of stopped because holidays, and you also were watching them with Apple earbuds, which was unacceptable to one of us. Uh... <laughs> But, iPhone 7 Apple earbuds. Yeah, that doesn't make it better, Chief. Um, oh. So we won't spoil anything for you, Ethan. But uh, having only seen the first three episodes, what do, what do you think of Andor? Before I expound upon what I'm going to expound upon. It does not feel like a Star Wars show. It, it's certainly not a typical one. It... Its cinematography is excellent. I think the first 10 minutes of the first episode, uh, you know, with those long, sweeping night scenes, it's just, it's, first of all, it's a beautiful show. Second of all, it, there isn't a bad piece of acting in it so far. Okay. The, the characters are believable. The people that play them are doing an excellent job. I just, I love the show. I'm hooked. And I will probably be rewatching the first three episodes just for the hell of it. Yes, you should rewatch the first three episodes. And then once you do, let us know so we can start working our way through the rest of them. Because I really didn't know what to expect with this show. I really liked the idea of following uh, Andor's character pre when we see him in Rogue One and how he got to where he is. I thought that was a cool concept, but I had no idea what to expect because Disney Star Wars is always a little all over the place sometimes. Uh, but yeah, I l really like this show and I cannot wait to see season two. I, I think I love the show for the reason that a lot of people have leveled criticism against it. I love that it is a slower, more gritty in the, everyday person's point of view of the star wars universe i love that we haven't seen a lightsaber i love that we have not seen a legendary character like han solo luke sky i'm i'm glad we haven't seen any of those characters 
I I enjoyed the slower nature of the show. It felt and this is going to be a weird comparison to make, but it feels to me kind of like The Godfather where you're watching this set of dominoes get set up and then the big knockdown at the end and you're seeing it from a couple different viewpoints. You're seeing it from Andor and his friends. You're seeing it from the Empire's perspective. You're seeing it from a couple different people's view and it all builds to what it builds to. And it, I, I really enjoy that. And I, I, I'll go back to what we said about like the Northmen or the Green Knight. I think people have gotten so used to the Marvel type movies where it's everything happening all at once for two, two and a half hours that we kind of have lost the appreciation for kind of the slower stuff. I do think Andor has a little bit of pacing issues when you see it as a whole, but it, I think, I think it's slower nature is much more of a positive than a negative. So yeah, mm -hmm. I, I really liked Andor. And since we're talking about Star Wars, Tales of the Jedi with those, those six episodes were really mm. nice. Just a nice I little, about that. Yes. Just a nice yeah. little Star Wars lore. Here you go. Uh, even though they did, I think they retconned a little bit Dooku's and uh, female Lady Yoda Yaddle. They retconned some of that a little bit, but I think it serves the universe a little better. But yeah, I'm I am I really like Andor, and I want to see more of Andor. So, um, Ethan, did you have any others you wanted to bring up quickly? And we'll start we'll start heading this toward an exit. No, I'm uh, I'm doing pretty good. All right, I'll quickly throw out some of the other ones I have written down here. Um, for another movie that we talked about already before on the podcast, so we won't go deep into it. But I, the more I think about it, I really did like Wakanda Forever. Now that we're a couple months removed from when we saw it, uh, yeah, mm -hmm. I liked it. I liked new the new characters. I liked how they handled uh, Chadwick's passing and how and how they wrote that in and incorporated that into the movie very, very naturally, like very, I, <laughs> I wanted what they did for Chadwick for, um, oh my God, I'm blanking. Why am I blanking? Oh no. Oh God. Princess Leia, I why, I can't think, why can I think? Catherine. No, don't. Princess Leia. Why can't I think of her actress's name? Oh my god. Oh, um, 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 Carrie Fisher. Carrie Fisher. I, I, dude, I just totally blanked on Carrie Fisher's name. Like, hard. Mm. Like, super hard. Mm. Like, um, she's I, glaring at you right now. Yeah. Well, here's the thing. I went, okay, well, if I say the other two actors' names, and I all I could think was Luke Skywalker and Han Solo, like, my brain hard locked on that information oh. for a second. Like, oh, you're panicking? Let's make it worse. I wanted what they did for Chadwick in Black Panther 2 for Carrie Fisher in the new Star Wars movies. I wanted, I wanted Rise of Skywalker to open on a beautiful funeral scene. But no, we got digitized Carrie that Fisher. That god awful yeah. set of movies instead. Oh. We, we, got, we got digital slash cutting room floor clips of Carrie Fisher and We yeah. got Carrie Fisher being Superman. <sighs> Yeah. Yeah. I wanted a nice I that's what I was hoping they would do, but yeah, Wakanda Forever, aka Black Panther 2, Vibranium Boogaloo. I still think I if they had named it that, I wouldn't be upset. Um The only other things I have written down here is we have been playing a lot of video games, uh, and I'll just throw out the ones that I've been enjoying real quick. Uh one that I've come back to and it's celebrating 10 years is War Thunder. It's World War II to modern day tanks, airplanes, and ships combat. Big, massive multiplayer online game. It, it's had its problems. It's fixed some of those problems. It continues to have problems. I still, it's the one of the few games that I have kept installed and go back to regularly. Um, I replayed through a little bit of Red Dead Redemption 2 from time to time. The Red Dead Redemption series is one of the examples I point to people 
when people say, oh, video games aren't art or have good stories. Like, no, there are some stories that only work for video games and Red Dead Redemption 2 is one of them. I don't think you could make it an HBO series. I don't think you can make it a movie. It is made for the medium that it was made for and it is a fantastic game. Uh, highly recommend. You guys are specifically Jared and John, our other friend, introduced me to PUBG, uh, which was has been fun. And we've been playing a lot of Viking Minecraft, a, a.k.a. Valheim. So, yeah. And then the, on, the only other one I have here that we didn't get to uh, was for music. I can't ignore the fact that uh, Jared, my, Jared and myself and some of our other friends uh, went and saw The Longest Johns live. Uh, we talked about that a little bit. They're a folk and sea shanty band from Bristol, England. Uh, that's very much the music I enjoy. Uh, and they are already working on their next album, even though they just released one this year. Uh, so if you're into, like, older music, uh, they do some of their own stuff too, but it's still very much in that uh, sea shanty, folk music, uh, traditional type style. Highly recommend. So, yeah. Uh, one more audience comment, and then we will boogie on out of here. Because there is only one more audience comment. It'd be mean if we didn't mention it. Donut Eater 111 says, besides all the animated shows that he mentioned in that tweet I told you guys about where he was just listing off the animated shows he liked, uh, he watched Better Call Saul Season 6, the new Star Trek, the, the couple new Star Trek shows there are, uh, the Yellowstone spinoff 1883, Sandman, Reacher, Resident Alien Season 2, and Stranger Things Season 4. So yeah. Any anything we're missing? Anything we didn't bring up that we should have? Um, probably a lot, but oh well. probably a lot. Uh, we'll quickly this. I did not expect us to talk this long as, about me about stuff that we liked, but I am now realizing that was a dumb thing to think. Um, I do want to close. Is there anything you're really looking forward to this year? Anything that you're like, yes, I can't wait. Oh, for this thing. um, as I hear his list unroll in his mind. <laughs> Um, I'm sure there's lots, but I can't think of anything right now. Yeah. But I'm sure there's I, lots of stuff that's coming out. Well, Jared, I'll put some words in your mouth because there is a long running movie series that has been so influential, so gut wrenching with its um character development and so ingrained in the American zeitgeist that we couldn't possibly not mention it. I'm talking of course about Fast and Furious 10 Shut coming up. 2020. Uh, no, real talk, Oppenheimer's coming out soon. Oh, uh, ooh, actually, Oppenheimer's coming out. Yeah. Actually, yeah. I'm hopeful um, for that one. I'm I am really hopeful. In, I'm really into the, uh, like, hey, here's a really influential historical figure that you don't know much about because they were kind of behind the scenes. I like this trend of movies. So long as they are true to the history, I like them. Like, I think the first one that I thought of was... Um, what was the Enigma Machine one? Was that Imitation Game? Yeah, I think uh, yes. Yeah, yes. that was the first one. Where I'm like, oh, oh, we're telling this dude's story. Okay, okay, I'm down. So yeah, well, that... with Benadryl cucumber, even. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but have you guys seen the cast that we're getting for Oppenheimer? Uh, Cillian Murphy uh, takes the lead. He's the big guy from uh, that Netflix show. Who's I'm blanking on. Um, Nice. Cool. Yep. Mm -hmm. that uh, guy. But uh, that guy Robert Downey Jr., Matt Damon, uh, wow. Remy Malek's uh, in it. Oh, nice. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Cillian Murphy from Peaky Blinders. That, oh, okay. Wait, isn't hmm. he Isn't he Oppenheimer? Yeah, he is. And he oh, actually he okay. does bear a good resemblance <laughs> to the man. Mm -hmm. the, only criticism, the only criticism I've heard is he kind of flubs the accent, but who cares? Like, okay. Yeah. Is... Is Snickerdoodle Cuddlebutt in this movie? Uh, I'm sorry, he's not. Uh, but oh, Josh okay. Peck is. What? Josh Peck oh is? My what? God. I nuked Oprah! <laughs> <laughs> oh. that, is a, that is a reference a very thin margin of our audience is going to get. Uh -huh. Oh, no. Huh. Uh, hmm. Okay. Any others? Or was Oppenheimer the big one? I forgot about Oppenheimer. Uh, I think that's the kind of the big one. Okay. Yeah, uh, I'm sure there's I, others, I but yeah, that is the one I, I am aware of. I do have a short list of ones I just thought of off, off the top of my head that I have either missed missed and want to go back and watch that came out recently or that are going to be coming out either this year or soon-ish. 
uh, that I that I am excited for the Last of Us HBO series. Mm, yep. That is starring yep. Pedro Pascal from of Mandalorian and other things, but I think and um, the kid that played the Mormont girl in uh, Game of Thrones, Bell- and she did an excellent job. So I'm Bell- I'm interested something. to see how she does in this one. Uh, Bell Ram Bella Ramsey. Mm. Um, I played Last of Us once. Is another video game that is very good storytelling wise. Um, from the, from the trailers, this might be one of the few pieces of live action video game to live action adaptation that might knock it out of the park. It looks really good. <laughs> I hope they don't fuck it up, but. It's from the same people that made Chernobyl. So I'm really hoping they do it justice. High so, expectations. Yeah. I have very high expectations because it is a very good and gut wrenching story if they do it right. Um, Masters of the Air is one that has come up in our conversation. That is the um, mm. in the I'll call it the Band of Brothers universe. Uh, Band of Brothers, the Pacific, Saving Private Ryan. Mm. That's all the uh, Steven Spielberg, um, Tom Hanks kind of productions. Uh, Masters of the Air is the one about the 8th Air Force in Europe. Uh, Sadly, it looks like it's going to be an Apple uh, release, which means... uh, Oh, that's fine. Yeah, Jared's going to have to... Jared can get it. Jared will hook us up. But uh, I'm really looking forward to that because as someone whose grandpa was a bomber crew member in the Pacific, not Europe, that would be cool to kind of see a portrayal of that that's not kind of you know glitzed up and hollywooded it's a little more grounded like Band realistic and pacific was yeah um yeah. weirdly you know what i put on this list indiana jones i'm curious oh I'm, yeah i'm curious yeah. i'm scared but i'm curious so yeah you know. scared but curious yep uh that's i good... put i put mm-hmm. devotion on my short list of things i want to see uh that's the uh uh Fighter pilot, uh, Korean War fi- Navy fighter pilot movie, the first uh, mm-hmm. African American naval aviator. Yeah. Uh, both for because it's set during the Korean War and we're a mash podcast, but also it just looks like I like that war movies have gotten back to like Midway was the first one I can think of that it's it's a modern movie with modern CGI and effects, but they took the effort to film it and tell a true story or as true as they could and film it using the same kind of styles that old, like the old fifties and sixties war movies were filmed. Midway was really good. And I have high hopes for, from everything I've heard. Devotion was fantastic. So yeah. Hmm. Um, Mandalorian, bad batch and Ahsoka for star Wars. Um, mm-hmm. bad, bad batch came out last week and I haven't watched the first two episodes yet. Uh, just cause I haven't had time. Uh, Mandalorian season three, we're getting Pedro Pascal. Love it. Can't wait to see what they do because they left it on a really interesting place uh, last season. And if they I can't remember if this is coming out this year, if it's maybe coming out this year, the live action Ahsoka show. I'm interested to see where they go with that. So tail end of this year, I believe. Mm -hmm. Uh, My note here just says more Tom Holland Spider-Man. But we're also getting into the Spider-Verse 2 soon. So that'll be exciting. Uh, And just for some variety, uh, I. One of my goals this year is to read more of the physical books that I have on my bookshelf that I haven't gotten to. And the first one I'm going to start with is a book about Churchill's Ministry of Ungentlemanly Warfare, the uh, office that Churchill created that he basically walked in, told them, hey, fuck with the Nazis. And that was their entire job for the war is just fucking with the Nazis, espionage and like weird like, I think one of the first stories is how do we how to create a magnetic limpet mine? And it was just two dudes playing with um, uh, like Plato, Plato, pie tins and condoms to try to create a uh, underwater magnetic mine that could be deployed on German battleships in port. Like, it's just weird, crazy shit the British did to fuck with the Nazis. And I would and I'm going to enjoy that a lot. But yeah, yeah, lots of media. There's almost too much media. We can't watch it all. But just a little. But yeah, you can uh, try. Next next episode, we'll get back to uh, regularly scheduled programming with Dear Dad again. I believe is the follow up to uh, sometimes you hear the bullet. 
Uh, some of you guys left comments about sometimes you hear the bullet, and we'll mention those when we get back to the actual MASH discussion. But I'm I'm hoping that this was a nice little change of pace. I felt like we needed a little breather from MASH, especially after kind of the heavier episode that was uh, the last w one we did. Uh, yeah, if there's media that you enjoyed or that you are looking forward to enjoying, please share it with us. That'll be cool. Um, and yeah, that's all I got. Anything else? I think we're done. Um, yeah, just one last side note. No matter how I say Beanie Bag Thunderclap's name, you know who I'm talking Beanie about. Beanie Bag Thunderclap. Sweet, merciful God. I have nothing that I could possibly say in response to that. I love Beetlejuice Cupboard Latch. I love, ah! I love Hilda Canker Sore. Bumper Car Chicken Coop. And with that, we'll see you guys in the next one. Follow us on Twitter, Instagram. You know how to do the things. The internet is a thing. Figure it out. Hit the button. Whatever the button, the button is. Press just, the just hit the button. Press Not the, the Oppenheimer button. Not the Oppenheimer button. Oh, God, no.